The cops show up right after I get a peek under Dag Horton's mask. They take my statement, then ask if I'd like to come and try the new coffee blend down at the station. I happen to know their coffee tastes like llama spit, but they're just being civil. When we get to the police station, I'm escorted into Mac Malden's office. You don't say. Yeah? Who told you that? Okay. Did you know the guy you threw off the roof? I didn't throw anybody off the roof, okay? Like I told your lackeys out there, we were rollerblading. Things got out of hand, he jammed his wheel, and the next thing I know... You seem to forget I'm a cop. And I'm a tired, pissed-off cop. If you keep getting on my nerves, I can put you in a drunk tank. I can do this whole thing again tomorrow. So, you chase the guy up to Rusty's funhouse. Then what? Well, there was a black Avatar speeder up on the roof waiting for the guy. I jumped him, and we struggled. But he went right over the top. We got a witness says the attacker was carrying a box when he ran from the flamingo. We didn't find it. You know anything about that? No. I've told you everything I know. All right, Murphy. You can go. Your story matches up. Right? There's one more thing. The NSA is getting involved in this. They're interested in that missing box. They're going to want to talk to you. Don't get too smart on this one, Murphy. You're in way over your head. Uh, thanks for the tip. Oh, you're welcome. One more thing. Oh. Man, this is not what you're going to tell me. Stick around in town. We might have to ask you some more questions. How many times have you told me that of last came to here? This case is getting way too complicated. There's a connection between Horton, the NSA, and the box Horton stole from Emily's apartment. But what is it? The NSA getting involved worries me. And then there's that gorgeous woman who got me off the hook. Who's she? I guess I need a plan of action. But first I need to talk to Emily and find out what she knows about Malloy. And then about the box Horton stole from her apartment. Sheesh, it's gonna be a busy day. Just the man I want to talk to. I understand the Black Arrow killer struck for the last time. Care to make any comment? Yeah, I've got a name for you. Dag Horton. Thanks for the lead. I'll see what I can find out about this Horton guy. This could be just what I need to top off my story on the Black Arrow Killer cover-up. Yeah, I'm sure the NSA is just going to love it. Yeah, I know. This thing must have fallen out of Horton's pocket. Oh, this is a tracking device. Maybe Horton stashed the box he stole from Emily's apartment and was planning on using this to locate the box later. This operates the way most tracking devices do. The sound it emits will speed up the closer I get to the target.
The tracking device should work fine down here. hidden inside this wall. The brick looks like it should come loose, but I can't get my fingers under it to move it. Small device is attached to the box. I'd better take a closer look before I do anything rash. Clayborne mine. I've read about these. To deactivate it, the red photons must be transferred to the left, and vice versa for the green. They're transferred by using the small shuttle that has three black stripes on it and is now on the red side. The transfer chamber must be powered by a red or green power cell which is lighter color than the others. Red or green photons can be in the same chamber and in the shuttle, but if there's more of one color than the other, it creates an imbalance, and the shuttle won't transfer. This box has holes drilled all over the top. I'll need to find whatever goes in those holes in order to get this box open.
Uncle Sam wants to see you. Oh, man, this isn't about those parking tickets. Shut up. All right. My new acquaintance is a good deal less cordial than the police were earlier. I'm thrown into the back of a black Avatar speeder. A few minutes later, we fly into the industrial sector and land by a familiar building. Autotech. I'm led inside, straight to Jackson Cross's office. Welcome, Mr. Murphy. Please make yourself comfortable. Do you know where you are? In your office? That's correct. Do you know who I work for? Well, if it's about that student loan, I think you and I could work out a reasonable payment schedule. <laughs> this guy's a real joker, isn't he? <laughs> Mr. Murphy, did you ever hear of the uh, Graham Act? That's a, an executive order that was enacted about 40 years ago when the United States was having trouble with terrorist groups. It gives our agency carte blanche when dealing with uh, internal security matters. So don't dick with me, Murphy. I'll pull out my gun and blow your face off. Well then, I guess you work for the NSA. Bravo! Give the man a big cigar. Now to the next question. Do you know why you're here? Are you trying to recruit me? Well, let me refresh your memory. You remember the other night, up on the roof? The man you threw off was an NSA agent. I didn't throw him off the roof. I can't help it if you hire clumsy people. Your actions contributed to the death of an NSA agent. Not to mention the small matter of interfering with an NSA investigation. Now you've got one minute to tell me all you know, or you'll find yourself the latest victim of the Graham Act. A girl hired me to find out who was stalking her. I kept an eye on her place. I saw your guy in her apartment. I chased him to the roof. He pulled out a gun. He tried to shoot me. We struggled and he fell. We've known for some time that high-level drug deals were going on at the Fuchsia Flamingo. That night, a shipment of euphoria was to be delivered. We had our agent at the girl's apartment to make the bust. Her life was never in any danger. You screwed up. I know that you're still holding something back. What is it? Look, I didn't ask to get mixed up in this case. I'm just a small-time P.I. And all I want to do right now is get out of your hair and go back to doing what people do when they're alive. Well, that's it. There's nothing more you want to tell me. Oh, well, there is one more thing. Your agent found a small metal box at the Flamingo. So you do have it. You should have said so in the first place. Now, do you want to tell us where it is? Will you cut me a deal? 
Oh, I'm not much one for compromises, Mr. Murphy. Get me the box. I'll see what kind of mood I'm in. I've got it right here. Take it. So you bid us to the box. You impress me, Murphy. I'm gonna do you the favor of a lifetime. I'm gonna let you walk. But if I catch you meddling in NSA affairs one more time, I'm gonna put a bullet right in your eyeball, is that clear? Get this puke head out of my office. I'll be watching you, Murphy. Yeah, this is good. You can drop me anywhere along here. We will. Whoa! The NSA thugs are courteous enough to drop me off back at the Ritz. When I get to my apartment, I notice the door is slightly ajar. The government boys probably spent some time in my office looking for the box. Hello. I hope you don't mind. The door was open. Well, I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. Uh -uh. Nice place you got here. Decorate it yourself? No. My housekeeper just started on Prozac. Have a seat. Well, thank you. So, aren't you going to thank me? You pulled my chestnuts out of the fire the other night, didn't you? I didn't get a chance to thank you because you left so quickly. I want to know why you did it. Oh, I'm sure you have women doing all kinds of crazy things just to get your attention. You don't know me very well, do you? When a woman pays attention to me, generally I'm so stunned, I don't do anything about it. I doubt that very much. So you drink bourbon, huh? Yeah, I can afford it. Yamas. Yamas. Sounds Greek to me. That's Greek to everybody. Well, I knew that. Mm hmm So, Ms... Madsen. Regan Madsen. But I'd prefer you call me Regan. Okay, Regan. You can call me Tex. That's not your real name. What is it? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. Sorry. I gotta know somebody pretty thoroughly before I come clean on that one. Well, then, um, maybe you should get to know me pretty thoroughly. So where's the box? Box? Yeah, I got lots of boxes. What size do you need? You know what I'm talking about. I do not. You like to play games, Tex. So do I. What's your angle? I don't have an angle, Miss Madsen. My business is my own. I don't have a partner, and I don't like small talk. You're a very beautiful woman. Extremely beautiful woman. But that doesn't make any difference as far as I'm concerned. Mm, tough, too. I have a proposition for you. First of all, you should know, I didn't just stumble into this part of town by accident. I've been looking for somebody. And who might that be? Thomas Malloy. God, I gotta find out about this guy. He knows all the beautiful women in town. He's my father. Oh. I heard you were asking around about him, and I thought I'd see what you found out. You said something about boxes. Still playing the game? My father sent out several boxes lately. The NSA was closing in on him, and he started to panic. I'm not exactly sure what was in the boxes or however many he sent out, but... Whoever finds all those boxes is going to come into an ungodly amount of money. So what's your proposition? I've already got one of the boxes. You give me the one you have, and I'll cut you in on the deal. Help me locate the others, and we'll have more money than you ever imagined. That's my proposition, plain and simple. You'll probably want some time to think this over. Why don't you call me at this number when you're ready to talk?
Don't lose that number, Tex. I think we'd make a perfect fit. Well, Regan Madsen sure knows how to make a first impression. The question is, is she on the level? There's no way to know if she's really Malloy's daughter or if she knows any more about the boxes than I do. I wonder if Fitzpatrick has any knowledge of the boxes, or Regan for that matter. There's a lot more involved here than just tracking down an old friend. And I'm right in the middle of it. Hey, I finally caught you at home. What's going on? Just sitting around my lonely office, all alone. My poor little P.I. Tell me how much you miss me. Well, I'm missing you about as much as a hard-boiled P.I. can miss a dame. Okay, He-Man. I'll let you get back to being bored and lonely without me. You know, I'm not going to be staying here too much longer. I should be home in a week or so. And, uh, I've got something that I think you're really gonna like. Oh, you are a cruel and heartless woman, Chelsea. Remind me never to buy you a set of handcuffs, unless you ask me. Ooh, maybe I'll surprise you and buy my own. See you soon, handsome. Well, I arrived safe and sound in Phoenix. It's almost as hot here as it was in your apartment the other day. Well, I just called to say hi, so... Hi! Well, I arrived... Physiognomy. It's a hobby of mine. You can tell almost anything about a person by their facial features. So I guess I have a bourbon face. Something like that. Listen, Murphy, I've got to apologize for the other night. See, that note that Emily got shook me up pretty bad. Though, you know, I didn't want her to know I was worried. Well, don't sweat it. I guess I kind of have a distrustful face. Of course, that'd be your department. <laughs> well, I do want to thank you. You saved Emily's life. So she's okay? She's pretty rattled. But she isn't hurt. You know, if you'd come in any later than you did. She's upstairs, sleeping it off. I'm fine, Gus. I couldn't sleep anymore. Gus told me what you did. I don't know how to thank you. Well, I guess we cut it pretty close, but I'm glad you're okay. Thanks. Listen, Emily, it's not too much trouble. I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Come on, Murphy. She's been through enough already. Cops grilled her last night. Let's let it rest for a while. It's okay, Gus. I owe him. A couple more questions isn't going to hurt me. Go ahead, Tex. Thomas is my husband. Pardon me for being stupid, but let me get this straight. You're Thomas Malloy's wife? Yeah. We were married about a year ago. So where's your husband? I don't know. Well, do you have any idea why he doesn't want you to know where he is? No. He just said it'd be better for me. Safer for me. 
I honestly don't know why he left. That's Thomas's daughter. She hates my guts. But I have no idea why. The man who attacked you last night took something from your apartment. Mm -hmm. Looked like a small box. Do you know what it was? No. I mean, I don't know what was in it. I couldn't figure out how to open it. How'd you get it? Well, Thomas sent it to me. I don't know why anyone would want it. How did it arrive? Through some delivery service. It was wrapped in plain brown wrapper. How'd you know Thomas sent it to you? Well, I recognize the handwriting on the outside of the wrapper. It was just plain brown paper. I threw it out, I guess. I don't know where it is. I really don't know too many people around here. I heard Thomas mention that, but I don't know much about it. I'm afraid I'm not much help. I'm not... I haven't heard it. Sorry. It's not a very glamorous name. When I make it big, I'll change it to something more exciting. Oh, I met Clint. He has a chocolate stand up at the Coit Tower. He always gives me samples for free. Gus is an old friend. He's always taking good care of me. This is Thomas, all right. I'm so worried about him. He doesn't look well, does he? I'm not... He was one of those cops that questioned me. He smelt like soy sauce. Oh, that's just a silly name Gus came up with. He didn't want anyone around here knowing my real name. Gus bought this place last year. He spent a lot of time and money fixing it up. When it was done, he couldn't afford to hire a house band. So I said I'd sing for him. He's the pig that works at the Ritz Hotel. When Thomas was staying there, I used to go visit. Nilo always made me feel cheap, the way he looked at me. I really don't know too much. Sorry. I'm not very good. Louis owns a diner down the street. The stew and... I don't remember. I think she's the girl who works at a newsstand across the street. I haven't heard much about you, except that you're a good P.I. Actually, I'm feeling really beat. I'm going to go back to bed. I'll see you guys later. She's a real trooper, isn't she? Yeah. Murphy, I really owe you. You ever need a favor? Just name it. Thanks. Keep that in mind. Right now, I need as much information as I can get about Malloy. I'll tell you what I know. I think I threw it out in the dumpster behind the club. It might still be there. If I knew where he was, I'd tell you. But I haven't heard from him for almost a month. Doesn't sound f I checked out the box Emily received, but I couldn't figure out how to open it. I don't know. I've heard it's the most powerful agency in the government. A couple things Malloy told me made me think they're after him for some reason. I can't help. I don't. I read the paper. It's about the only mutant run publication in the city. Doesn't sound. I think she's going to be okay. She's pretty resilient. Emily has a weak spot for chocolate, so we've gotten to know Clint pretty well. He's a strange one. Let's talk about. Yeah, that's Malloy. Looks like it was taken recently. 
I don't... He was one of the cops that questioned me and Emily. Can't say much else about him. I've always wanted to own a nightclub. I've put my heart and soul into this place. Any business you can send my way, I'd really appreciate. Doesn't sound familiar. I don't know. Doesn't. I bought a few things from the pawn shop when I was decorating the club. Bargaining with Rook is like removing a splinter. That's the big guy who runs the diner, right? Seems real friendly. And he makes some tasty grub. I gave Chelsea a complimentary membership. She's the kind of person I like to have in the club. You seem like a decent guy. I think we'll get along fine. As long as you keep your hands off Emily. That looks like it could be the brown paper wrapper from the package Malloy sent to Emily. Ah, snagged up on the light post, though. This antenna isn't busted. I might be able to extend it. There's no return address or name. But there has to be something here that will give me a lead to Malloy. Maybe I need to take a closer look. Microdot on the wrapper contains a PB meter number. Probably some kind of postal code. Must identify which post office the package was sent from. Now I just need to find someone who would know which post office that is. What can I do for you, Murphy? That's the code for the post office in the Mission District. Don't know anything about it? Like I told you. We I land my speeder outside the post office Mac referred me to. The counter help fails to live up to its name, but a professional loiterer working outside seems to recognize Malloy in the photo. For half a pack of smokes, he suggests I check out several boarding houses in the area. After pounding the pavement for over an hour, I arrive at a quaint brownstone called the Garden House. Hello there. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a man named Thomas Malloy. Is he staying here? Let me think. No, none of my guests is named Malloy. Here's a photograph of him. Oh, heavens yes. He moved in last week. Such a nice man. Oh, I know he seems very nice. But he's really a sick man. You know, nuts. He's got a terrible case of, uh, Murphy Bar Syndrome. My goodness! He seems so lucid! 
Yes, it's a strange illness. The only symptoms are an irresistible attraction to boarding houses and, of course, compulsive lying. When he has a relapse, it's like pulling teeth to get a straight answer out of him. I'm so sorry. Well, I know that respecting and caring for your elders is considered old-fashioned, but it's a responsibility that I take very seriously. Wish you my nephew. Your uncle's not in right now, but I'll let you into his room. You can wait for him up there. Okie dokie. Now the lights keep this room nicely lit. Well, this bedspread's the most startling thing in the whole room. Nice tree. The wood from this could get quite a blaze going in the fireplace. Now the lights keep this room nicely lit. A book of puzzles. Maybe it has some word searches in it. I love word searches. Hmm. A collection of the Bay City Mirror's daily anagram puzzles. If I ever really get stuck on an anagram, at least I've got a connection at the newspaper. A solid maple roll-top desk. I'd kill for a desk like this. Well, maybe I just maim somebody. And Cosmic Connection magazine. I seem to remember Fitzpatrick saying something about this. I remember Fitzpatrick telling me about the Cosmic Connection magazine. Looks like a sci-fi rag to me. Looks like a business card. These drawers look searchable. It's an envelope addressed to someone named Elijah Witt. It's all locked up. Looks like the closet. Nice fireplace. All I need now is a stack of wood and Jane Mansfield. This pair of jeans wasn't here before. I guess Malloy must have come back and then left again. This warehouse address is 54 Front Street. That's in the waterfront area.
Dr. Thomas Malloy, I presume. You're NSA, aren't you? No, sir, I'm not NSA. My name's Tex Murphy, and I'm a private investigator. I was hired by a friend of yours. I don't have any friends, Mr. Murphy. Well, what about Gordon Fitzpatrick? Fitz. Good old Fitz. I wonder why he sent you after me. Are you all right? Uh, give me some water, will you? <laughs> oh, 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 thank, thanks. Uh, oh. Mm, mm. oh, oh, no. I, 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 I've led an excessive life, and I'm afraid the bill is coming due. Now listen, Murphy, <clears throat> what I'm going to tell you <laughs> could help Fitzpatrick continue my work. <clears throat> <clears throat> the only catch is uh, I'll put you in the same danger I'm in. Don't let that stop you. Danger's a little like jello. Always room for a little more. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ever hear of Project Blue Book? Sounds familiar. Have you ever heard of Roswell? Yeah. About a hundred years ago, there was an apparent UFO crash. And the government came out and said it was just a weather balloon. A weather balloon? It was no damn weather balloon. It was a spacecraft. <clears throat> the Roswell incident was the greatest disinformation campaign of all time. So what was the connection between Roswell and Project Blue Book? Well, Roswell is where Project Blue Book became Project Blue Print. Now, you probably never heard about it, seeing as how you're still alive. Why do I have the feeling you're about to lower my odds in that department? Do you mind? In 1947, an alien spacecraft crashed in the desert outside Roswell, New Mexico. The wreckage was taken to the Air Force base nearby for testing. And of course, they were looking for weapons. Sounds like the military hasn't changed too much. You don't mind me asking, Doctor, how do you fit into all of this? In 1984, I came on board Project Blueprint. My job was to carry on the work of deciphering the hieroglyphics found in the spacecraft. <clears throat> anyway, in <clears throat> early 1996, word of a breakthrough spread throughout the complex. Now, apparently someone had discovered that one of the alien instruments could generate minute quantities of anti-hydrogen. The big boys in Washington were ecstatic now, if you remember, the desert standoff was in effect, and we were looking for a technological edge over the Middle East block. Now, we had it in the palm of our hands. But unfortunately, as you know, things went very wrong. That's the understatement of the century. Well, the military was in such a hurry, they didn't take time to do any testing. Instead, they started a political incident then proceeded to bomb the hell out of the Middle East. Greatest snafu in history. Now, after the war, I left the military, but I managed to smuggle out all my notes and other important items from Roswell. I secretly continued my re- <laughs> Ken Lloyd, don't move! I said freeze! Be stupid. Put it down. Look, I'm supposed to bring you back alive, not in a body bag. I don't think so. No! Back off. Back off! My 
orders were to bring in Malloy alive. But I guess that doesn't apply to you, does it? Well, in that case, do you mind? 